Now let's see if we can use Gauss's law to work out the electric field from a point source, a point charge. So we have a little charge, Q, sitting in space. What's the electric field at some other position? Now we know the answer here, it's given by Coulomb's law. But let's see if we can derive it from Gauss's law, because Gauss's law, it turns out, is more fundamental. Coulomb's law doesn't work in relativity necessarily, whereas Gauss's law does. Okay, so in this case, as always, first picture. What's going on here? Well, we know the electric field is going to point away from the charge, if it's a positive charge. And from symmetry, we know it must point equally in all directions. There is no particular direction here, no special direction. So it should point in all directions equally. OK, so that's fundamental. Two, pick your Gaussian surface. Well, we want a surface that's either parallel or perpendicular all the way to the electric field. The obvious one is a sphere all the way around the charge, say of radius r. Why is that a good surface? It's because at every point on it, the normal vector in the electric field, so the normal vector will be that direction, the electric field is in the same direction, so they're in the same direction, which makes adding them all up to work out the surface flux very easy. OK, so what is the surface flux? The surface flux is going to be uh, electric field dot normal vector times dA, and that's going to be equal to well, it's just the electric field is going in the same direction, so that's just going to be equal to the strength of the electric field times the area. And what's the area of a sphere? It's 4 pi r squared, area of the surface of a sphere. And that, according to Gauss's law, equals the charge over epsilon naught. So rearranging, we find that the strength of the electric field at some distance r is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared, which is Coulomb's law. Very nice.